Hello everyone, welcome to Diagnostics by Rick. Today's 10 minute diagnostic is a no communication problem on a 2001 BMW 325i. The car runs fine, but it has a check engine light on and the customer needs to get an emissions test. This one will be very fast diag, so let's get started. I didn't get a picture of this BMW, but trust me when I say that it is in its twilight years of operation. Although the check engine light is on, the shop only requests that I diagnose the communication issue and they want to handle the check engine light themselves once communication is restored. There are no drivability complaints other than the check engine light, but the vehicle owner needs to get an emissions test, but the emissions tester can't get a reading from the DLC. Everything seems to be talking except the DME. This is a manual transmission, so there's no EGS, and the radio is aftermarket. A global OBD2 scanner also will not communicate with the DME. There are no codes in the ZKE for communication faults. The same goes for the rest of the modules. There are lots of codes, but no communication codes. It looks like the DME is talking to everyone except me. So let's look at a diagram to try to see what's going on. I rotated this diagram to get the whole thing on the screen. The DLC is in the top left of the diagram. The DME is just to the right of the data link connector. Let's zoom in on the DME. There are just two sets of CAN lines and two Diag TXD lines. If you didn't notice, the CAN lines do not go to the DLC. These are used for module-to-module -module communication only and not for scan tool communication. Looking at the DLC, there are two communication lines. Pin 7 goes to a splice that then breaks off and goes to many modules. Pin 8 is the same color and goes directly to the DME and only to the DME. Looking here, there's another COM line from the DME that goes to the transmission controller, but this is a manual transmission and does not have a trans controller. Since we are having communication issue only with the DME, and there is a separate COM line on the DLC specifically for the DME, I need to make sure the pins are okay at the DLC so that our scanner can get a good connection. Here you can see that pins 7 and 8 both look fine. Since I'm dealing with a single wire and a single module on that circuit, I can get by without using a scope on this fault. Just a power probe should show me what I need to see. Here you can see pin 7 has 2.7 volts on it with the scan tool removed from the connector. I don't want to measure any output from the scanner, I just want to see what the modules are doing. Pin 7 was the COM line that spliced off into multiple modules. Remember, pin 8 is the COM line strictly for the DME. I thought I might find it to be shorted, but it's not. It's an open circuit. If I connect the scanner, it changes to 2.7 volts, just like pin 7. I don't have a picture, but I measured the same at the DME as I did at the breakout box by back probing this same line at the DME. So there's no broken wiring. Since I had no voltage at the DME with the scan tool unplugged, and that voltage changed to 2.7 when I plugged the scanner in, I know there, there is not an open circuit between the DME connector and pin 8 of the DLC. This is surprising because module circuits that don't carry a load very rarely fail. In fact, you can typically short a communication circuit straight to ground or to B plus and not really hurt anything. I don't recommend that you do that because it's not necessarily true for every vehicle and you could destroy a computer. But in most cases, these are high resistance circuits that carry very little or no current and generate very little heat. And as such, they rarely fail on the circuit board. So I need to dig a little deeper and make sure the connector is making good contact with the DME. The e-box lid was secured tightly and I found no water in the connector, but it looks like some was there at one point. 
One of the pins for the DME is broken off inside the connector. The DME itself does not look any better than the connector does. You can see the missing pin in the lower right. The small water drops are because it started raining lightly as I did this job in the parking lot. This water was not there when I removed the connectors. Well, I did say this was a fast one. I generally prefer to use an oscilloscope when diagnosing communication faults, but this was one of those rare cases where it really wasn't necessary because there was only one module on the circuit in question. If you take nothing else away from this job, remember to check your connectors before condemning a component. I've seen quite a few parts replaced because of a poor connection between the component and the female pins of the connector. Maybe corrosion, maybe heat damage, or maybe spread due to someone maybe spreading the pins too far apart with a power probe or other, some other kind of test lead or a T-pin. You may often see me using a power probe on connectors. Just remember, when doing so, you only want to just lightly touch the face of the female pin. Don't force the power probe tip into the connector. That will spread the pins apart and cause a poor connection. It's okay to lightly touch the edge of the female pin, but don't apply any pressure at all. Some of these pins are very easily bent. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe. I will link my Patreon page in the description below for anyone that wants to help support this channel. That is all for this one, so everyone, please have a good day.